this is a Tesla story that I think is worth talking about because it really pushes back against one of the most common criticisms of electric cars, the idea that the batteries wear out quickly, that they're kind of like the uh, lead acid batteries in cars that we need to replace every few years. An Uber driver in Western Australia, a very hot place by the way, has been running his uh, taxi, which is an Uber taxi, uh, Tesla Model 3, 2021 model. So he bought it a few years ago and it, it was brand new. It's not, a, it's not an old car at all. And it has just crossed 255,000 miles or 410,000 kilometers here in Australia. And the really interesting part is the original battery is still in outstanding condition, given that it's in a hot climate and it has been used pretty much every day as a taxi driving uh, car. So no replacements at all, no serious degradation, just a small drop in capacity after all of that really hard, hot use. Some really interesting data as well we've managed to pull from this. So this isn't a sort of garage queen car sitting around doing the occasional Sunday drive. This is a rideshare vehicle that has basically been on the road every day clocking up many hundreds of kilometres with constant stop-start city driving, with the air conditioning going, uh, heat cycles, charging sessions, everything else that normally accelerates wear. And it's been doing this for the last few years. When the car went in for some routine work at EV Works in Port Kennedy, the technician checked the stats and saw that the battery still had about 90% of its original usable capacity left, which is outstanding. 410,000 kilometres in Western Australia as a daily used uh, taxi. That's amazing. After a quarter of a million miles, and 410,000 kilometres, that is only about 10% degradation. So for comparison, petrol cars at that kind of mileage usually have had some sort of engine repair, at least as a bare minimum, lots of uh, maintenance, maybe a transmission issue, maybe some oil consumption, something like that. A lot of Japanese vehicles usually can hit that sort of mileage without too many issues though, but you have to look after them. What's even more fascinating is how this particular battery was treated. Tesla's long-range Model 3 uses different chemistries, but this particular one was an LFP chemistry pack, lithium-ion phosphate, which is obviously known for being more durable than nickel-based chemistries. And you'll find uh, NMC or NCM chemistries uh, throughout basically all the EVs that we can buy. Most of them will have an option that has NC NMC, NCM chemistries. So the owner put about 50,000 kilowatt hours through the car in total and 71% of that was slow AC charging and uh, mostly at home overnight and 29% was DC fast charging and that is important because we know that fast charging heats up the cells more and accelerates wear over time so by leaning heavily on home charging this uh, particular driver has essentially given the battery an easier life even though the mileage itself is quite a lot. Now I know so I know some people will say, well, that's just one example. I know it's anecdotal, but you know it lines up with what we've seen in studies and also lots of other people have had a similar experience. Real world data from uh, other Tesla owners shows average battery degradation of around 12% after 320,000 kilometers. So he's done particularly well or just been lucky really. And LFP chemistry seems to really hold up well and better than NMC packs uh, on these these cars where they've done you know three four hundred five hundred thousand kilometers I've seen them at. So when you put these sort of numbers together, it paints a very different picture to the doom and gloom headlines that suggest that EV batteries are dead after three years and you need to you know bin them like a lithium like a twelve volt lead acid battery. So there's also the financial side as well. Driving two hundred fifty five thousand miles or four hundred ten thousand kilometers genuinely is about 40,000 or 42, 43,000 Aussie dollars if you paid today's petrol prices for the last couple of years, really. So yeah, he saves a lot of money and that doesn't include servicing, no oil changes, no exhaust replacements, no batteries or anything like that, no timing belts, no spark plugs. It's, it's, yeah, it's done really, really well, saves a lot of money. So from a total cost of ownership perspective, I think it's it's not even close. The Tesla will win hands down to pretty much any petrol car, even you know some of the most reliable, you know Toyota Yaris, Toyota Camry, something like that. So this is where it ties back into the bigger EV conversation. A lot of people worry about buying an EV, a used EV, for example, because of the battery. It's the single most expensive component, and nobody really wants to end up with a dud. But examples like this show that with the right chemistry and sensible charging habits, these batteries can last far longer than you know many people expect. And I reckon 
Uh, in fact, it could be the body of the car that wears out before the battery does, even in Australia, because cars do not rust. In Australia, it's pretty rare. I know some people will disagree and say, if you're near the coast, everyone's near the coast, really, but cars, generally speaking, do not rust, and they look brilliant after 20 years in this country. So uh, that is, uh, yeah, it's pretty remarkable, especially if you're from Northern Europe, you'll think cars rust like crazy in Northern Europe, but they don't here in Australia, that's for sure. So yeah, you might need new seats, new suspension, things like that, new bushings, or maybe an occasional handle or something if, if I don't know, if someone gets snapped off. But yeah, you, you may maybe need to even paint it before the car even needs to be uh, looked at for a battery replacement. And it's worth pointing out as well, this isn't a one-off miracle Tesla. It's part of this wider trend. There's lots of high mileage Teslas now uh, knocking around on the internet. And uh, yeah, they're being used as taxis and Ubers in places like New York, the Netherlands, and Australia have been Australia have been showing similar results too. So some Model S vehicles in Europe have crossed five five hundred and fifty thousand kilometres with the original battery packs as well still functioning really well. And with LFP chemistry, the expectation is that you will get well over three thousand full charge cycles. So if you multiply you know four hundred kilometres by three thousand char charge cycles you're kind of looking at over a million kilometers of usable life in theory. If you compare that to a Toyota Camry with a, like a, ta a taxi, if you compare that with a taxi Toyota Camry with 400,000 kilometers, the engine's probably going to be tired. The gearbox might need, you know, might be slipping a little bit. The fuel system is probably going to be half worn out. Uh, maintenance costs, probably fairly high you know after all that time you'll have done a lot of oil changes and that sort of stuff and uh, yeah most of them will be scrapped at four or five hundred thousand kilometers or sold for parts but with an ev you still have about 90 percent of the battery left if you've done what this this bloke has done which is really really great probably at some point soon the motor bearings will need to be replaced because they will fail surely and if you ask tesla from what I hear, they will try to sell you a full motor. They will refuse to replace the bearings. But actually, a decent mechanic down the road should be able to take the motor out and swap the bearings in it because they're just normal bearings. Feel free to recommend some good mechanics as well, by the way, if you're in Australia. Just put it in the comments so that we can all see who you recommend. Rideshare delivery vans or taxis. These are the toughest real-world environments for a vehicle, really, especially in Western Australia where it's, it's pretty warm. Uh, they rack up really high mileage really, really quickly. They often get driven by multiple people who aren't really treating the cars gently often if evs can prove very you know this reliable private buyers should have even more confidence i think because if a tesla can survive 250,000 miles as an uber driver doing thousands of trips a year then a family car doing 15,000 kilometers something like that annually is barely going to scratch the surface and of course, the other side of this story is the technology gap with legacy automakers. Tesla has been using LFP chemistries at scale for a few years now, and it's it's definitely paying off. BYD also does the same with its blade battery, which also uses LFP chemistry. But many legacy automakers are still focused on nickel manganese cobalt packs, which offers higher energy density, but they degrade quite a bit faster honestly and they cost more to build so when buyers start to see high mileage teslas with minimal degradation with lfp chemistry they will naturally ask why their petrol or hybrid toyota batteries are not lasting so long and uh yeah this is something to note i think not every tesla is perfect some people have had issues with door handles failing screens are overheating you know they've fixed these things by the way tesla this is kind of pre-2019 mostly and yeah batteries can definitely fail you know, for example, the old pyro fuse used to break in some of them. But the headline here is resilience. They're getting much more resilient. A car with more than 400,000 kilometers still running strong. And, you know, most of its mileage is still there. It's uh, capacity in the battery. LFP batteries proving themselves to be really, really durable. And charging habits matter. AC charging is better for longevity. And third, EVs in high mileage rails like Uber are already proving that they can save drivers literally tens of thousands of dollars uh, while holding up mechanically. So that's a big deal. This, you know, obviously it's huge for the economics of rideshare drivers or, you know, for the secondhand market. If you can buy a Tesla and drive it while saving this much money, then, you know, they are they are going to make some good cash out of the car. Hey folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Let me know, please, in the comments, 
if you were buying a used EV, would you be happy with one that has done 250,000 miles, that still had 90% of the capacity of the battery? Would you feel nervous about that? What do you think about the long-term degradation of these cars? I'd really like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Please uh, feel free to say anything if you like down there. If you've owned a high mileage EV yourself, out of interest, what did you think? And how was it to sell it? And what did the person who bought it from you, what did they think?